My name is Angus Black. I came to China in 1990. I was the youngest chartered engineer in the UK. In my field, it was unusual for one to be an engineering manager before 50 years old. So I was 30, yeah. When I, when I first came to China, the images of China were from old books. We really didn't know what to expect when we came here. But um, when we came, it wasn't the Chinese that we expected from the, the stories and from the books. Uh, it, was, it was a culture that was different. And the people were intelligent. And they had the ability to do things, and the ability to do things quickly, which was surprising from our education. I was working in projects which were power projects. So we were using technology that wasn't available in China at that time. Um, I'm talking to my boss, I'm saying, we've got all this new technology just now, but I think in 10 years time, China will have the same, what will we do then? And my boss says, oh, no, I don't, 50 years at least, yeah. But in fact, I was correct. In 2000, all the, all the technology that we were selling to China, China was producing themselves, they could do themselves. And a lot of things they could do themselves even better than we could. In the field of uh, water treatment, China was better than the UK, better than anywhere else in the world. So I come from uh, Glasgow, uh, Scotland, which is an industrial city. In 1960s Glasgow, uh, the environment there was uh, very smoggy. So when I came to Beijing in 1990, it wasn't such a big surprise for me to see smog. I've noticed um, just before the, the Beijing Olympics, there was a big improvement to the air. But uh, the most significant improvement I've noticed was in the, the past six years, since uh, 2013. Um, there has been a lot less dust in the air. Um, 2013, people were talking about Beijing blue. Uh, now no one talks about it because the sky is always blue. You know? uh, using the data from NASA's satellites, you can see that the greening of China has increased a lot, and proportionally higher than any other country in the world. Um, so since 1990, I've been to at least 30 cities in China, and I could see a change every time I came to China. But now China is progressing from being a follower to being at the same level. And in many ways, China's a leader. How is it happening? How can they afford to do this? How are they able to manage this?